Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HackRaz. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing Google Earth visualizations. This is where you take your RAS Mapper results file from a 2D flow and uh, import that into Google Earth to take advantage of some of the Google Earth visualization tools. All right, so what I have here on the screen is the Heck RAS Mapper user's manual. This is the page I'll be discussing as it describes how to uh, perform the tasks of exporting your RAS Mapper files into Google Earth. Here is my model. What it is is a river reach. There is a, a 2D model. Let me go ahead and toggle on some of my geometry here. Here's the 2D flow area and the perimeter. Okay, so you can see the mesh. I just created a simple model here where I've got an upstream boundary with a rising water surface elevation and then a downstream boundary that's using a normal depth. Let's go ahead and check those out real quick. So here is the unsteady flow data, normal depth. I just set that to a specific slope. And then the hydrograph here, this is the stage hydrograph. It starts at 18 feet and then it rises up to 30 feet and then it stays at 30 feet for the rest of the simulation. It's a two day simulation. Here is the stage hydrograph. Again, the first day it's, it's increasing and then the second day it just holds constant. So we're gonna go ahead and run this simulation and then check out the results and do all the Google Earth visualization. Uh, to run the model, you just go ahead and click compute when all your settings are set up. I've already done that and here in Rise Mapper, I now have my results. If I scroll down, there's this results right here. So I'm going to toggle off some of the other geometry I don't need to see. And now what I have for my results is my depth, my velocity, and my water surface elevation. I'm also going to add an inundation layer, and I'm going to do that in just a moment. But before that time, I want to introduce Google Earth. Go ahead and uh, download Google Earth if you want. It's free software. I've been using it for years. It's great for looking around areas you're not familiar with. And in this context, also visualizing data and results from your floodplain analysis. All right, so here is the same river. It is flowing in the west direction. There's a couple bridges down here on the on the downstream end. And my 2D flow area I'm using for this particular Ekraz run is this area sort of right in here. So it includes the river plus some area on the north side and the south side of the river. If you go ahead and zoom in, you can um, look at the buildings in detail. And the buildings and then the flooding is of particular interest in this lesson. Also in this left menu, I want to I have my 3D buildings layer toggled on. So if you go ahead and toggle that on, you may have to wait a moment for some of the visualization to show up. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate a little bit and then zoom in. It may take a little while to get used to the controls as well. But you can see that that 3D buildings layer sort of gives some of these buildings a three-dimensional look. So if I zoom out here, you can see where those are with respect to the river. Right along the river here on this south bank is a levee embankment. But what I've done in my geometry file is created a terrain modification. So I believe it's right through here. I've lowered the land surface, so basically creating a large gap in the levee to create a flood just to simplify things so I don't have to also include breach data. Okay, now let's go back and take a look at some of those results and create that inundation layer. So we're back in RAS Mapper. Right here is the location of that terrain modification where I've lowered the elevation and basically bypassed this levee. So the levee is the higher elevation. That's the white line here. The lower elevation is the green. See, if I just click on the terrain, you can see the actual color ramp here that defines the elevation values. Now I'm going to zoom out and just run through the simulation results. I'm going to toggle on the depth layer. And this is the last time period, I believe. So I'll click on depth. And then let me go ahead and roll back the simulation and then click the play button. So the water increases and then it floods. Of course, this is also bound by my 2D flow area. So it looks a little superficial when I'm zoomed out that far. But you can tell by the end of the simulation, all of the buildings down in this south end of the river, the south side of the river, are inundated. And if I'm curious what that depth is, I can just hover with my map or my mouse. And it says it's four feet here, it's three feet there, one foot. Out in the river, it's 14 feet. And we can turn on the flow arrows and the particle tracing if we're interested as well. Other layers we may want to include is the velocity and the water surface elevation. 
So I can go ahead and toggle those on. But what I want to do is create a new layer, and that is for the inundation boundary. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on my plan, right click, create new RAS results map layer. And then for hydraulics, I'll go ahead and select the inundation boundary. I'm going to go ahead and select maximum. And then over here, polygon boundary is my only option. Okay. So add to map. It's been added. And then click close. I'm going to go ahead and toggle off all these other layers. Now it looks like it doesn't exist. And that's just because I need to right click and compute slash update this stored map. Okay. So it says it's been created. I'll click OK. And here is my map. This is the inundation layer. And it's confined to the 2D flow area based on the results from that plan. All right, next it's time to export that inundation layer to a 3D KML. To do that, just go ahead and right click, export layer, and then there's a save layer to KML and also a save inundation to 3D KML. We're gonna do this second one here. This uh, KML is a keyhole market language that's specific to Google Earth. So go ahead and go ahead and click that. Now, where it's going to save this KMZ file, that's the zipped up version of a KML, is within my project and then within my plan. And then here is the actual file name right here. That's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as it is. There are a few different 3D KML export options I want to describe. Of course, the file name is right here. If you want to change this, you can just click on the button, change the name or the location. And then the inundation polygon options, this is where the user can specify how those polygons are generated. The default values are shown here on the screen where the boundary polygon filter tolerance is set to one. Now, if you don't want any tolerance or filtering at all, you could just set this to zero, but the higher the number, the more the filtering. So the more the filtering, then the smaller the file, the faster the rendering at the expense of less accuracy. The way it works is if you have three adjacent points and you draw a line between points one and three, then if the second point is within this one foot tolerance, it's removed. All right, so the next one down is interior polygon cell size and feet. This is a number that's generated by HECRAS to try to get, I believe, 10,000 individual cells based on the inundation area. So if you want smaller cell sizes, you can type in a smaller number and that would result in more precision or larger cell sizes would be faster rendering. Number of decimal places is just one. So we'll take a look at that later. Once we look at the results in the exported inundation map, once it's brought into Google Earth, we'll be able to view the depth, velocity, water surface elevation, and so on to the nearest uh, point one of that parameter's specific units. So we'll just go ahead and leave that at one. All right, down here we have interior polygon values and the options are sloping or horizontal. I would definitely go with sloping. It looks better for visualization. Horizontal will provide somewhat of a stair stepping look where each cell has this, the exact same elevation and these cell sizes are 60 feet by 60 feet. Whereas the sloping water surface elevation option here, which is the default, just provides a more smoother and natural look. And uh, last is the water surface plotting method. And the default here is depth relative to ground. This option will allow the output depth on top of whatever ground elevation Google Earth is reporting. This is uh, used when the terrain data is better than the Google Earth data or in, in steeper terrain locations. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with the depth relative to ground. There's also computed water surface elevation as an option. This will plot the computed water surface elevation without considering the Google Earth terrain values. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK and let that generate. OK, so it tells me that it was a successful generation of that those polygon files. I'll click OK. Now let's head over to Google Earth. So open up your Google Earth. I'll do it and you can see what happens here. You can go File, Import. Now we want to navigate to that KMZ file. And sure enough, it's right here. I'll go ahead and click that. All right, so it's loaded up. It changed my view. And now here is the outline of that 3D exported AMZ file for the inundation area of my simulation. Let's go ahead and zoom in now. So remember, this is the maximum depth where this was taken. Type N to align north to, to up. And that here is the river. 
here's the top of the levee. It looks like it hasn't actually flooded, but because I added this little notch right here, this is the terrain modification. We have flooding all in this area down here. I'm going to go ahead and just single left click and it tells me the depth, velocity, and water surface elevation. And as you notice, this is the one decimal place because I specified one decimal place. And then we have a depth of 14 feet. Over here, we're probably going to have a smaller depth. I'll just click on the street. Okay, that's a depth of 0.5 feet, so not very much. And then right here, a depth of 1.9 feet. In the middle of the street here, a depth of 3.3 feet. Of course, there's also velocity and water surface elevation if you're interested in that as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at those buildings. I mean, we have 3D view toggled on for a reason. And now you can kind of get an idea of the flooding extent and where the flooding comes up to on some of these buildings. Okay, so I always like that. And then let's go ahead and um, take a look at Street View. So Street View is a little feature here where you drag the little orange person onto the map, onto a blue line that has Street View data, like this corner right here. So we'll just drop it. It'll bring me into Street View, and it also includes that inundation depth. So we see the, the water surface is on the screen here, and it's kind of hard to tell uh, just how deep it is, but it gives you a visualization from the ground level, All right? So go ahead and close that, and then back to my main view. Over in the table of contents, the layers panel, if I expand the inundation boundary and then expand that layer, we now have the individual layers, and these are the individual cells that are spaced 60 foot feet by 60 feet. So let me just go ahead and zoom in on this one right here, double clicking, it's 14 feet, so that's in the middle of the river. Probably not a good one, let's find one how about something like this? Depth of 8.2 feet. All right, so we're over here. That means this cell right here is 60 by 60 feet. And then the next cell over, if I click, it'd probably be something else. See, it's changing over here in the left panel, which cell I clicked on. They all seem to be fairly close together. I'm going to do one more example while we're here, and that is to export the inundation boundary but not for the max depth. Let's do it for a different depth and also change some of our settings so we get some different results. So I'm going to go to stage again. That's the name of the plan. Right click, create new results map layer. As before, I'm going to select the inundation boundary for my map type. And then for the profile, I'm going to go ahead and select a different number here. Actually, I'm not sure what I want to do. So let me go ahead and just toggle off inundation layer. Toggle on the depth and then find a depth during the simulation where part of this area is flooded, but not the entire area. So it looks like we have some initial flooding right here at 10 p.m. on the first day. Let's go ahead and maybe go, how about this, 3 a.m. on the beginning of the second day. It looks like part of this area is flooded, but not all. So let's go ahead and select 3 a.m. All right, again, right click, create map layer, inundation boundary. And then for the profile, I'm going to go ahead and go down to day two at 3 a.m. and then add to map. Okay, I'm going to turn off the depth and then I need to compute this layer. Okay, so it says it's successful. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and export this to the KML 3D view. Export layer, save inundation to 3D KML. So what it's going to do is it's going to save it to the same plan, but say it's 3 p.m. or sorry, 3 a.m. on day two. So let's change a few things. Let's go with two decimal places. Let's change the cell size to 100 feet. And let's also change this computed water surface elevation. OK, so that should give us some different things to look at. I'll go ahead and click OK. OK, it says that we have successfully generated those polygons, 3200. And now back to Google Earth one more time. I'm going to scroll up to the top. I'm going to toggle off those inundation results that we had before and then collapse those layers. All right. Another way, instead of going to File, Import, I believe you can just drag the KML file into Google Earth. Okay, I've zoomed out again. Uh, yeah, I believe you can just drag that file in. I'm going to open up my project directory. And it looks like here it is. Here's the plan. And then here is the KMD file right here. So I'm just going to move this over and then can I drag it here? I think this might load it automatically and it looks like it did. That's cool. All right. So here is the flooding extents, which is going to be 27 hours into the simulation, which is three hours into day two. As you can tell, there's less of a flooding extent because I can toggle on the max depth right here. 
And then if I toggle off max depth, okay, so I can colorize and do add some symbology. But what I want to focus on is uh, some of the differences between the two different export values. So for instance, if I just do a single click, I now have two decimal place values for my depth, velocity, water surface elevation, and any other results I happen to export from RAS Mapper. And now this time, if I go ahead and utilize Street View, perhaps at a location that isn't inundated, such as this location right here, I'm going to go down to the street. We can see that uh, the street is dry. The inundation layer doesn't seem to work really well. It's way up in the sky, and we know that um, it's barely flooded at this location. So hold on a second. That leads me to believe that when I went to save inundation 3D layer, I think this needs to be depth relative to ground. Google Earth used to have elevation data, but right now in the, the bottom right corner here, it says elevation zero or one foot. And I know that's not true. If I exit street view here, yeah, it's, it's saying it's zero at all locations. So there's something a little bit wrong with my Google Earth. Hopefully that's, that's fixed or I just need to update. Well, that's it for this lesson in HECRAS. What we did was explore some Google Earth visualization options by creating an inundation layer, providing the settings that we wanted, and then bringing that layer into Google Earth. We checked out some of the 3D building options as well as Street View.